much real pleasure to be with you. I'm going to try to be quick. My wife says she's never heard an elected guy criticized for speaking too briefly. Not only that, Pat, you are a very tough act to follow. The guy doesn't take much credit. He doesn't take near the credit he deserves. Uh, I've seen him get on a plane on Friday to uh, uh, go over because the, uh, I think his title is Vice Chair for Housing of China has asked him if he'll come and be back in the house by Monday. You can imagine the jet lag, but a uh, relationship is so important uh, in Asian marketing and uh, Pat's been absolutely terrific. Uh, he's built on the work the other ministers he mentioned did. Uh, terrific. Very quick anecdote. My wife and I have been babysitting our four-year-old grandson over the weekend. He went to sushi for breakfast the other day, so we took him out. My wife's a fine Scottish woman, and she doesn't like to waste money, so I was going to buy him each a bottle of water, and she said, no, we'll share one. The little guy used it first, and when she asked for it, and he was handing it over, it was looking pretty cloudy inside. A little backwash going on there, and she said, or maybe not. He says, it's okay, Grandma, I'll drink the sushi out of it for you first. <laughs> Not relevant to anything Pat said, but I said it. <laughs> Greetings to all of the CGA members here today, fellow roundtable members, and of course my provincial colleagues. I want to talk a little bit about the role of the Small Business Roundtable, which I'm honored to co-chair with Pat. I did this when I was Minister of Small Business and uh, Regulatory Reform and Revenues as well, and it was my actually my favorite activity in the uh, five ministries I had. The Roundtable was formed in 2005 with a mandate to advise government on issues, strategies, and potential actions to support BC small businesses. I learned when I was chairing it that there had been March orders that nothing would be on the agenda of the Small Business Roundtable unless it had been approved by government in advance. And we did away with that immediately because it's really all about finding out uh, what's bugging small business. And the reports were pretty good actually already then. Uh, small business would say to me, well, we're pretty happy with the provincial government, all your cuts in taxes, all your cuts in regulation, a few issues with the feds, quite a few issues with local governments, and so we're working on those things too, and we have a pretty happy collaboration between the three levels of government lately. Uh, but I really want you to know, many of you obviously represent a lot of small businesses, we want to know their issues, and we will work on them, and it doesn't matter how many they are. Uh, we have a huge emphasis uh, with this premier on uh, job creation, we did with Premier Gordon Campbell as well, and on families, and jobs are good for families, as we all know, so if there are rules that are bugging your clients, make sure they tell us about them, or you do, because we want to rule them out. If they're unnecessary, they can be done away with. We've had a lot of good things that the government's accomplished with business in the last few years. You've probably heard of BizPal. It's a service provided, uh, one, providing one place for businesses to access, access permanent permit and the library slow down and license information to all levels of government. It works dandy. It's reduced a process that once took seven hours to between 20 and 30 minutes. Such time savings are significant, of course, for small businesses. We strongly encourage all businesses to access this service. We're thrilled that we have 380,000 small businesses in the province. They issue a million fifty thousand paychecks each pay period, and that's tremendous. It's 57% of all private sector employment in the province, and uh, we want to grow many of those small businesses to large. The province also continues to promote the adoption of what's called the MBL, the Mobile Business License, by local governments. At first, local governments were a little resistant. They didn't want to lose the revenues they received from licensing businesses, but it's worked so well in the areas that have done it. They're, they've actually seen their revenues increase. And businesses love it because instead of having to buy a license in each of a whole string of communities and put the time into uh, doing that, they have one that works for all the communities. And it's good for the local governments too because their revenues have risen and the number of small businesses they have has risen. So by purchasing one mobile business license, rather than multiple non-resident permits, businesses can operate in any participating municipality. Now this just happened to fall into my uh, email in basket this morning. So it's not bragging, but I was thrilled to read that according to Small Business BC, an excellent organization in Vancouver that you probably know about, Kamloops has been rated as the top small business growth community from June 2010 to 2011, and that is at 5.8%, 5.8% increase. So I was, I was thrilled to see that, uh, absolutely delighted. We, uh, we've seen 2,500 new, net new jobs created in Kamloops in the last year. 300 in July alone, and uh, that's in the face of a, a worldwide recession. 
I didn't really believe those numbers when uh, Stats Canada produced them, so staff fact check them, and it's true. We love to save time and money for business, and we see that businesses put that money, those savings, into job creation. Keep it up. The Old College and Mill Community Region is a great example of an area that has very aggressively embraced the mobile business license, and there are 19 local governments participating. Greater Victoria has also had such a license for many years. So along with Minister Bell, I'm looking forward to the, the next year of uh, small business consultations around the province. Since the roundtable was created in 2005, it's had almost 50 consultations across all regions, nearly a thousand people, business people turning out to participate. I look forward to hearing from many of you here today and throughout the year about how we as the province can help make it easier and less expensive for you and your clients to do business in British Columbia. Thanks so much for your time today and for inviting us all here.